The Honourable Jan Barham. Mr. President, I rise on behalf of the Greens to say that we are deeply. Mr. President. I rise on behalf of the Greens to say that we are deeply sorry to all those people who were affected by the wrongful practice of the removal of babies from mothers. We are sorry to the mothers, the fathers, the grandparents, the siblings, adoptees and adoptive parents and families who have suffered from the past practice known as forced adoption. They have endured pain, grief and harm for decades. I know I acknowledge that many of these people are in Parliament today and to those who are in the Chamber, welcome. The apology must be the first step in addressing the wrongdoings that have been identified and the initiation of actions and undertakings that offer appropriate redress for past mistakes. The extent of unlawful and in some cases brutal treatment of women who sought support while pregnant involved the removal of the baby at birth often unseen by the mother as she was drugged and physically restrained during birth. There was coercion to sign papers for adopt adoption aided by the denial of information about their rights and the support that was available to them. In some cases, women were told their babies had died or that it was the best, in the best interest of the child, a better future with an adopted family who could provide for the child and that it was selfish of the woman to deny the child this opportunity. Sadly, it has also been revealed that some children did not find their way into supportive and healthy families. Some found themselves as wards of the state or fostered, and evidence from hearings has identified that some of these experiences have also been painful and harmful and not in the best interests of the child. These actions led to ongoing pain and suffering for the women and for those associated, the fathers, grandparents, siblings, friends, and for the babies who have grown up believing they were unloved and abandoned. These are the issues that must now be addressed. For some, these experiences resulted in rejection by family and friends, mental health issues, suicide, substance abuse, and many of the mothers never had another child. Reunion between mother and child isn't always posit positive or possible. There are the children who have searched for their mothers and have been too late to find them alive, as early deaths appear to result from the pain and suffering in this cohort and the mothers who have found that the life of their child has not been the positive experience that was promised. A submitter to the Senate inquiry stated, we need to be respected in this country's history as mothers who had their babies taken forcibly from them for no other reason than to satisfy the ideals of others. We need to be respected in this country's history as mothers who are unjustly abused, betrayed and punished by all governments, hospital staff, welfare workers, religious hierarchies and society because of their inhumane, obscene prejudice towards us. I acknowledge the significant work undertaken by the Senate Community Affairs Reference Committee chaired by the Greens, Senator Rachel Seward. It delivered a unanimous report and findings as the result of an extensive inquiry and recommended that apologies be issued by the Commonwealth, State and Territory Governments and non-government institutions that administered adoptions. I also acknowledge the work undertaken by the Legislative Council Social Issues Committee in its 2000 report releasing the past adoption practices 1950 to 1998 and the government's response in June 2001. These inquiries provided the opportunity for many of these people who were affected to bravely share their experiences. I honour their strength in doing so and their long struggle of living with the horror of what has been done to them. Now the future for all those whose lives have been shaped by this experience is to provide the respect, support and opportunity for them to be heard and receive assistance. The apology will provide the public awareness and government and institutions must now the pro provide the means to redress the wrongs. The Greens believe to do so in accordance with the recommendations of the inquiries. It is necessary to deliver concrete actions by providing specialised support services that are appropriate and accessible to allow all of those who are affected by these practices to receive the professional support and counselling they deserve. 
There's also a need to establish a specialised complaints unit to allow people to come forward to have their experiences recorded and assessed. There should also be a public memorial to commemorate the apology and to assure ongoing awareness. It has also been recognised that there is a need for ongoing research to assist in the understanding in understanding the extent of the impact of the practices and to inform the actions required to redress the grievances. There are also the expectations of the submitters to the New South Wales Inquiry that their submissions be made publicly available to allow others to read of the personal experiences to better understand the pain and suffering. This disturbing history has now been revealed and we all have a responsibility to ensure that actions are taken to address the consequences of this practice of forced removal of babies. I encourage all members to read the Senate and Social Issues reports and to acknowledge that the apology is the beginning of a process of providing support and understanding to those who are affected by the horror of these practices. Again, I say sorry to all and offer a commitment to maintain a focus on the delivery of actions required to ensure the apology is meaningful.